from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering machine learning everywhere. Build your ladder to AI. Brought to you by IBM. Well, welcome back to Midtown New York. We are at Machine Learning Everywhere, Build Your Ladder to AI, being put on by IBM here in late February in the Big Apple, along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls, and we're now joined by Dinesh Nirmal, who is the Vice President of Analytics Development and Site Executive at the IBM Silicon Valley Labs. And Dinesh, good to see you this morning, sir. Thank you, John. Fresh from California. Yeah. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, you, you've talked about this, uh, and it's really your world, data, the new normal. Um, I mean, explain that. What, what, when you say it's the new normal, what exactly Exactly. How is it is it transforming, right. and 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 what are people having to adjust to in terms of the new normal? Right. So if you look at data, I mean, I would say each and every one of us is has become a living data set. Our age, our race, our salary, you know, what our likes, our dislikes. Every business is collecting every second. I mean, every time you use your phone, right, that data is transmitted somewhere, stored somewhere. And airlines, for example, is looking, you know, what do you like? I mean, do you like an aisle seat? Do you like to get home early? You know, all those data is all being generated. All the above, right? right? <laughs> and, and petabytes and setabytes of data is being generated. So now, businesses' challenge is that how do you take that data and make insights out of it to serve you as a better customer? That's, that's the, you know, that's where I come to. But the biggest challenge is that how do you deal with this tremendous amount of data? That is the challenge, and create insights out of it. Well, that's interesting. I mean, that means that the definition of identity is really, I mean, for decades, it's been the same. Yeah. <laughs> and right. What you just described is a whole new persona, identity of an individual. Right, and now you take the data and you add some compliance or provisioning like GDPR on top of it. All of a sudden, how and do GDPR, you I mean, for those who might not be familiar what uh, Right, uh, that's uh, a regulatory term that's yeah. used by EU to In make EU. sure that, right. you know, if me as a customer come to an enterprise, say, I don't want any of my data stored, mm -hmm. it's up to you to go delete that data completely, right? That's the term that's being used, sure. and that goes into effect in May. How do you make sure that that data gets completely deleted uh, by that time that customer has? How do you get that consent from the customer to go do all this. So there's a whole lot of challenges as data as multiplies. How do you deal with the data? How do you create insights to the data? How do you create consent on the data? How do you be compliant on that data? You know, how do you create the policies that's needed to generate that data? All those things needs to be, that's, those are the challenges that enterprises face. I mean, you bring up GDPR, which for those of you not familiar with it, it, it actually went into effect last year, but the fines go into effect this year, and the fines are onerous, like 4% of turnover. I mean, it's right. just, Hideous, and and the question I have for you is so, it, this is this is really scary for companies because they've been trying to catch up to the the big data world, right. and so they're just throwing big data projects all over the place, which is collecting data, oftentimes private information, right. and now the EU is coming down and saying, hey, you have to be able to, if requested, delete that. Right. A lot of times they don't even know where where it is. Exactly. So exactly. big challenge. Are you guys? Can you help? Yeah, I mean, so today, if you look at it, the data exists all over the place. I mean, whether it's in your uh, relational database, where you're in your you know, Hadoop, uh, unstructured data, where it's in you know, object store, it exists everywhere. And you have to have a way to say where the data is, and it, does the customer has the consent given to go, you know, for you to look at the data, for you to delete the data, all those things, right? So we have tools that we have built and we have been in the business for a very long time. For example, our governance catalog where you can see all the data sources, the policies that's associated with it, the compliance, all those things. So for you to go through that catalog and you can say which data is, is GDPR compliant, which mm -hmm. data is not, which data you can delete, which data you cannot. Yeah, we were just talking in the open, Dave uh, you know, made the point that uh, many companies, uh, you, know, you need, all-stars, uh, not just somebody who has a specialty in one particular area, but maybe somebody who's in a particular regimen and they've got to wear about five different hats. Exactly. So how do you democratize data to the point that you can make these all-stars right. across all kinds of different business units or, or different focuses within a company? Because right. all of a sudden people have access to great reams of information. It's like, I never had to worry about this before, right. but now you've got to spread that wealth out and make right. everybody valuable. Right, really good question. So. Like I said, the data is 
existing everywhere. And most enterprises don't want to move the data because you know it's a tremendous effort to move from an existing place to another one and make sure the applications mm -hmm. work, all those things. So we are building a data virtualization layer, uh, a federation layer, whereby which if you are, a, let's say you're a business unit, you want to get access to that data. Now you can use the federation or data virtualization layer without moving data to go and grab that small piece of data. If you're a data scientist, let's say, you want only a very small piece of data that exists in your enterprise. You can go after without moving the data, just pick that data, do your work, and build a model, for example, based on that data. So that data virtualization layer really helps because it's basically an you know SQL statement. You know, if I was to simplify it, that can go after the after the data that exists, whether it's a relational or non-relational place, and then bring it back, have your work done, and then you know put that data back into where it is. So I don't want to be a pessimist uh, because I am an optimist, but it's scary times for companies. If you think of the 20th century organization, they're really built around human expertise. Right. How to make something, or you know, how to you know transact something, or how to serve somebody with you know, consult, whatever it is. The 21st century organization, data is foundational. Right. It's at the core, and, and and if my data is all over the place, and I wasn't born data driven, born in the cloud, all those all those buzzwords. Right. How do traditional organizations, yeah. you know, catch up? What's the starting point for them? Right. So. Uh, most, if not all, enterprises are moving into a data-driven economy, right? Because it's all going to be driven by data. Now it's not just data, you have to change your applications also, because your applications are the ones that's accessing the data. One, how do you make uh, a application adaptable to the data, amount of data that's coming in? How do you make accuracy, right? I mean, if you're building a model, having an accurate, you know, model generating accuracy is key. How do you make it performant or you know, governance or secure? That's another challenge, right? So there's a, there's a, how do you make it measurable? I mean, monitor all those things. So I mean, if you take a three or four core tenants, that's what the 21st century is going to be about because as we augment our you know, humans or developers with AI and machine learning, it becomes more and more critical how do you bring these three or four core tenants into the data so that as the data grows, the applications can also scale. Big task, right? So if you look at the industries that have been you know, disrupted, you know, taxis, you know, hotels, mm -hmm. books, advertising. Yeah. Um, retail. Re retail, <laughs> thank you, yeah. Right. Um, maybe less, now you, and you haven't seen that disruption yet in, in, in banks, insurance companies, certainly parts of government defense, you, know, you haven't seen a big disruption yet, uh, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you've got the data all over the place, you said earlier that virtually every company has to be data driven, mm -hmm. but a lot of companies that, that I talk to say, well, our industry is kind of insulated, or yeah, we're going to wait and see. That seems to me to be a recipe for disaster. What are your thoughts on that? So I think the disruption will come from three, three angles. One, AI. Definitely that will change the way mm -hmm. blockchain, another one. You know, when you say we haven't seen in the financial side, blockchain is going to change that. Right? Third is quantum computing. I mean, the way we com do compute is completely going to change by quantum computing. So I think the disruption is coming. Those are the three, if I have to predict into the 21st century, that will change the way we work. I mean, AI is already doing a, a tremendous amount of work, right? I mean, now you can, a machine can basically look at an image and say what it is, right? We have Watson for cancer, oncology. I mean, you know, we have 400 to 500,000 patients being tr treated by Watson. So AI is changing, not just from an enterprise perspective, but from a socioeconomic perspective. Right. And from a you know human perspective, so Watson is a great example for that. But yeah, disruption is happening as we speak. And, and do you agree that that, that the f foundational to AI is the data? Oh yeah. And, and and so with your clients, you like you said, you described they've got data all over the place. It's it's all in in silos, not all, but much of it is in yeah. silos. How does IBM help them sort of be a silo buster? Hmm. So a few things, right? One data exists everywhere. How do you make sure you get access to the data without moving the data, that's one. But if you look at the whole life cycle, it's about ingesting the data, 
bringing the data, cleaning the data, because like you said, data becomes the core, garbage in, garbage out. You cannot you know, uh, get good models unless the data is clean. So there's that whole process. I would say if you're a data scientist, probably 70% of your time is spent on cleaning the data, making the data ready for you know, building a model or for a model to consume. And then once you build that model, you know, how do you make sure that the model gets retrained on a regular basis? How do you monitor the model? How do you govern the model? Um, so that whole aspect goes in. And then the last piece is visualization or reporting. How do you make sure once the model or the application is built, how do you create a report that you want to generate, you know, or you want to visualize that data? So that whole, you know, the data becomes the base layer, but then there's a whole life cycle on top of it based on that data. So the, f the formula for future innovation then st starts with data, right. you add in AI, right. I would think that you know, c cloud economics, however we define that, is also a, a part of that. Oh, yeah. um, I, I, my sense is most companies aren't ready. Um, what's your take? For uh, the cloud or? Yeah, the, or so I'm talking about innovation. Oh. You know, if, if we agree that innovation comes from the data plus AI, plus you've got to have, you know, by cloud economics, I mean it's an API economy, right. you've got massive scale, you know, th those kinds of, to, to compete. Right. Uh, you know, look at, if you look at this, there's disruptions in, in taxis and retail, I mean, it's right. got cloud economics underneath right. it. So right. most customers don't really have, they haven't yet even mastered cloud economics, right. yet alone right. the data and the, and the AI right. component. So right. there's, there's a big gap. Right, There's, it's a huge challenge. I mean, how do we take the data and create inside out of the data? And not just existing data, right? The data is multiplying by the second. I mean, every second, petabytes or setabytes of data are being generated. So you're not thinking about the data that exists within your enterprise right now, but now the data is coming from several different places. Unstructured data, structured data, semi-structured data. How do you make sense of all of that? That is the challenge that customers face. And if you have existing data on top of the new, new coming data, how do you predict, you know, what do you want to come out of that? I heard. I mean, you talk about, I mean, it's really, a, it's a pretty tough conundrum that, that, that some companies are in, because if you're behind the curve right now, you've got a lot of catching up to do. Right. So you, know, you think that, that we have to be in this space, but keeping up with this space, because the change happens so quickly, is really hard. Right. So we have to pedal twice as fast right. just to get in the game. So, right. I mean, so you would talk about the challenge. How do, people, how do you address it? How do you get somebody there to say, yep, here's, here's your roadmap. I know it's going to be hard, right. but once you get there, you're going to be okay, or at least you're going to be on a level playing field. Right. I mean, so if you look at, I look at it as three Ds. There's the data, there's the development of the models or the applications, and then the deployment of those models or applications into your existing, you know, enterprise infrastructure. The, not only the data is changing, but that development of the models, that the, the, Tools that you use to develop are also changing. I mean, if you look at, you know, just the predictive piece, I mean, look at from the 80s to now. I mean, you look at machine, vanilla machine learning versus deep learning. I mean, you know, there's so many tools available. How do you bring it all together to make sense? Which one would you use? And I think, you know, Dave, you mentioned Hadoop was the, <laughs> you know, term from, you know, a decade ago. Now it's about object store and you know how do you make sure that data is there or JSON and all those things. So everything is changing. So how do you bring as an enterprise you keep up afloat on not only the data piece but all the core infrastructure piece, mm -hmm. the applications piece, the development of those models piece, and then the biggest challenge comes when you have to deploy it because now you have a model that you have to take and deploy in your current infrastructure, which is not easy because you're infusing machine learning into your legacy applications, your third party software, software that was written in the 60s and 70s, it, you know, it's, it's not an easy task. I mean, I was at a major bank in Europe and the CTO mentioned to me that, Dinesh, um, we built our model in three weeks. It has been 11 months, we still haven't deployed it. And that's the reality. Yeah, and, and there's a cultural aspect too, I, I think. Um, I, I think it was Rob Thomas, I was reading a blog that he wrote and he said that he was talking to a customer saying, thank God I'm not in the technology industry. Things change so fast, I could, I, I, I'm so glad I'm not a software company. 
and Rob's reaction was, uh, hang on, right. <laughs> you are in the technology business, you are a software company. And so there's that cultural mindset. And you saw it with, with GE, Jeffrey Immelt said, I went to bed an industrial giant, woke up a software company, but look at the challenges that industrial giant has had, you know, transforming. So, um, so they need partners, they need people that have done this before, they need expertise right. and, and, and obviously technology, but it's people in process that always hold us up, right? I mean, technology is one piece, and that's where I think companies like IBM make a huge difference, is like, you know, you, you understand enterprise, because you bring that wealth of knowledge of working with them for decades, and they understand your infrastructure, and that is a core element. Like I said, the last piece is the deployment piece, how do you bring that model into your existing infrastructure and make sure that it fits into that architecture, all those things. And that, that involves tremendous amount of work, skills, and knowledge. Job security. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dinesh, thanks for being with us this thanks. morning. We appreciate that and good luck with the, uh, the rest of the event here Thank in New York City. Back with more here on theCUBE right after this.